Hey kids, and welcome back to another SimCity 4 tutorial video on Rob's Red Hotspot. So this episode, we're going to be talking about transportation. The last episode, we talked about desirability factors and how to encourage more valuable zones to develop in your city without breaking the bank. Uh, as we as we saw, uh, once you get to a certain size, you're going to start to have transportation problems. And so I'm going to be going through in, in pretty extensive detail how transportation works in this game, and and you know how to make it how to make it how to make use of it to develop your cities in in a in a in a better way essentially. So before we talk about transportation. Uh, I'm gonna have to talk about the network add-on mod. Now in the first video I mentioned that I I really feel that you you should not play this game without installing the network add-on mod. So if you don't have that mod installed, some of what I'm saying is going to apply. Maybe even most of what I'm saying is going to apply. But really, you should have the network add-on mod. And, and so what does the network add-on mod do? Uh, well, first of all, I, it's not really a mod that like changes the gameplay to make like an alternative, or alternative kind of game or whatever. Uh, it is a mod that fixes features of the game that that were broken. Okay, it, it fixes features of the game that really prevented you from playing this game to the extent that you can play it now. So yeah. Uh, what else does the mod do? So, so the the, the network add-on mod or NAM uh, fixes fixes one of the key problems. It fixes is that in vanilla in vanilla SimCity 4 uh, Sims, if Sims were going to work, they and let's say that they were going to work along a road like this or something, or they were going they they live here and they're working I don't know here or something, right? Um, in SimCity 4 vanilla without the network out on mod, Sims would take the most direct route. Okay, so they would maybe take a route like this. Okay, and in in with the network out on mod, they're not going to take the most direct route. They're not going to take the shortest route. They're going to take the fastest route. So maybe they'll go an extra block this way to get on this very fast boulevard, or to take uh, to take this elevated rail to get to get where they're going. And that means that it actually takes them less time, even though if you measure the route in you know tiles, it's it's less. So that's one of the main things that it fixes. It means that Sims actually take the fastest routes rather than the most most physically direct routes. Uh, it also it gets rid of all sorts of bugs around. I'm going to zoom out here. Uh, it gets rid of all sorts of bugs around regional transportation. Uh, so so various bugs about how many people go to a neighboring city, how many jobs there are for them, how those jobs are counted, and things like that. Uh, and it also provides a huge amount of alternative modes of transportation. So you've got tramways, you've got all sorts of fancy rail stations, you've got underpasses, overpasses, you've got super elaborate highways, you got boulevard, you've got avenues with turning lanes and all sorts of things. So if you look through the transportation thing here, you'll see, like, look at this. We got pedestrian malls, we got av we got roundabouts, all sorts of things here, right? Now, I am not going to go through every single network add-on mod puzzle piece. In fact, I'm not going to look at any of the network add-on mod uh, puzzle pieces. Uh, I may do another video on some of my favorite ones, because there are lots. Um, but but uh, I'm going to focus on the the vanilla, essentially the vanilla modes of transportation, because I, my goal here is not to show you the, the the you know the best way to make the most beautiful city or whatever. It's really just to show you how different forms of transportation function in the game, uh, what their role is in making a functional city, uh, and yeah. So I'm going to focus on on the really the simplest the simplest modes of of transportation. I may do another video later where I talk about uh, some of my favorite aspects of the network out on mod. Uh, if you don't play the game with the network out on mod, you can by all means you can you sort of make a small city and play around. But because of the way that the network out on mods handles in particular neighbor connections, it will allow you to build bigger cities. You will have a great deal of difficulty building very large cities in without the network out on mod. In fact, you'll have you'll have a great deal of 
of difficulty building functional cities. And, and part of the reason for that is that when they released SimCity 4 in 2003, uh, they had created this very, very powerful traffic simulator. Uh, but they ended up having to basically turn it down. Uh, basically, they they had to you know they had to scale down the traffic simulator because they found that PCs uh, in 2003 couldn't run the game well with the traffic um, simulator. So they they cranked it way down and essentially weren't aren't aren't using the full potential of the game. The network add-on mods really unleashes SimCity 4 uh, and and gives you access to the full potential potential of the traffic simulator as well as adding all sorts of new features. So before I d dive into how to build transportation in the game, I am going to show you an important feature of the network add-on mod, which is the traffic simulator. So I'm not going to go through every single option in the traffic simulator, um, but I will, I will go through some of the more important ones. And uh, there's essentially two settings that I would suggest that you you need to think about and you need to decide what you want to do with them. So the first setting that you're going to need to think about is mass transit usage. Uh, so you can see we've got a bunch of preset options here and then we've got a custom option. I would actually shy away, especially if you're a beginning player, I would shy away from using the custom option. So basically the lower you set it, the more like an American city uh, you'll you'll find your experience, right? So we can and and what this mass transit usage setting does is it puts in the parameters for uh, which wealth levels of Sims will prefer to use which which forms of transportation. So this medium setting is like a is really like an American city. Uh, the low setting would be like an American city that's particularly car oriented. But you can see here on the medium American uh, setting that uh, low wealth residential will prefer mass transit 50% of the time and cars 50% of the time. Medium wealth will, will use transit 20%, cars 70%, and the fastest route 10%. So that's interesting. You've got this fastest thing. That means they'll choose the fastest option between mass transit and cars. And, uh, and rich rich sims, only 10% of them, high wealth sims that is, only 10% of them will use mass transit, 80% will use cars, 10% will, will use the fastest route. Okay, if we go to high, which is European, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, you'll see that mass, uh, that, that um, in a European city, low income, Sims overwhelmingly prefer mass transit, and only 20% of them will use the fastest, uh, the, sorry, the car. Uh, and we'll also see a much stronger skew towards mass transit in terms of uh, middle class, middle class uh, Sims. One of the things you can also notice in the European city is that uh, mi the middle class Sims will will never. They, they're not going to prefer the car, they're going to use the fastest. So if, if, if using a car is faster, they'll use a car. If Otherwise, they'll use, they'll use transit, basically. And that, that is kind of an interesting setting. I mean, I think that, that is most, uh, most European cities, especially, you know, fairly wealthy European, northern, northwestern European cities are, are very transit focused, right? They're very dense cities. And often, often in European cities, I mean, people are not using mass transit because they're good Samaritans and they don't want to pollute the environment. They're using mass transit because it's the fastest way to get around. So I think that's, that's an interesting setting. You can also go to very high. Uh, very high, I think, would, would make it a little bit more like a city like Tokyo or Singapore or Hong Kong, where, where you know, owning a car is really restricted to, to the very wealthy. It's very, very, in a city like Hong Kong, it's, it's you know, owning a car is an absolute luxury. Uh, they, they, there are all sorts of rules about uh, where you can use your car, where you can park your car. Uh, anyway, so that's an interesting setting, and I would recommend that you, you pick a setting that suits the type of city that you want to build. The other very important setting um, that you're gonna that you're gonna want to choose is your base network capacity. Okay, so your base network capacity. If you put it on classic, and this is where I was saying that the that the network add-on mod really un unlocks 
uh, the traffic simulator in, in SimCity. Uh, the classic network capacity, let's look at these. So the network capacity is going to affect these numbers here, right? These are the different types of transportation. And if you use the classic setting, I mean, look at that. Subway has, you know, a, su a tile of subway can only carry 3,000 people. In real life, by the way, a subway can carry anywhere from 40,000 to 100,000 people, you know, in a, in a certain amount of time. So, so you know, daily anyway, and, and, and at once, certainly certainly more than this. Like it can, you know, a subway can, can carry thousands of people very, very quickly, right? So if you put it in classic mode, you are going to constantly have congestion, and that will mean that you're going to have a city of 50,000 people or 100,000 people, and you're going to be building heavy rail and subway. I mean, imagine a city of 100,000 people with a, with a fully functional subway. It's just, it's not realistic. It, it's also going to make it very, very difficult to to build a large city. I, I strongly suggest simply setting this to ultra or high. Uh, the only reason you would not use the ultra setting is if you feel that if you find that your computer is is lagging because there's you know because your city's too big. Uh, if you unless you have a, a unless you have an old machine at this point, uh, you know maybe a ten year old computer or something. Uh, I would I would recommend just putting the network capacity to the highest. You may feel like that makes the game easier. Uh, I don't I don't think so. It, what it does is it allows you to build bigger cities. So there's not really there's not really much reason not to use that setting. Um, other things. So there's not much else. This option is interesting, highway bus lanes. I have it ticked off uh, at the moment, but basically uh, that will mean that any, any highway that you build in the game is going to have more bus lanes on it. Uh, park and rides, I would avoid using this to be honest. Parking is a bit wonky in the game, but you can experiment with it. Uh, and buses contribute to traffic, highly recommended. Yeah, I would, I would keep that on, uh, buses do contribute to traffic. Uh, monthly fares, I don't touch this in general, but you could play around with it. Um, I guess you can use monthly fares to to kind of push sims in one direction or another. Um, and and that will also affect the, your income. I tend to not touch this because if anything, to be honest, if anything, I would reduce these um, to make it more realistic. But yeah, this is this is basically going to affect how much money you make from from your transit system because you cl you actually collect the fares. And let's see here, data views. I would tick all of these. Uh, the network add-on mod has provided new data views that are much more detailed for transit. And I would strongly recommend you use this, these. Um, you can also, the network capacity here, you can also multiply it here. So we can, we can multiply it like that. We can increase the capacity even more, right? And this is the intersection effect multiplier. Uh, intersections have more traffic, of course. Vehicle air pollution. You can play around with all these, but I, especially for a beginning player, I would not recommend playing around with them. If you want more details on the traffic simulator configuration tool, I will try and post a link in the description uh, with a detailed, with a you know detailed view that goes into every single aspect of this. But it's a fairly simple configuration, all things considered. It's a fairly simple configuration. But yeah, like I said, most important, uh, choose your mass transit usage. That's a ma matter of personal preference. And I would set the base network capacity as high as your computer can handle. Now, one last thing before we go back into the game, the traffic simulator configuration tool, uh, it, it once you choose your settings in this configuration tool, it affects all your cities. So it, unfortunately, in SimCity 4, at the moment, it's not going to be possible for you to have one city that's in an American style of, of transit and one city that's in a European style of transit. Uh, you, you certainly can build your cities that way. It's just that every time you load up the city and press play, uh, all, it's, this is going to take effect, right? So if you do want to build two different kinds of cities, every time you change the traffic simulator configuration tool, you only you, you should only load and work on the cities that the cities that you have that are in the you know in in the style of transit usage that you want. And the same goes for the base network capacity. Now it's not going to break your city if you make if you change it. It's just going to 
you know, it may cause problems, right? If you reduce the capacity of the network, for example, you're going to have traffic problems you didn't have before, and you're going to have people who can't get to work, right? And if you change the transit usage, well, if you increase the transit usage and you haven't built a lot of transit in the city, well, people are, again, are going to have trouble getting to work, uh, or they're, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have development issues, basically. So let's go back into the game. Okay, so I have loaded up a fresh city tile for the purpose of uh, talking about transportation. Uh, I have opened up a tile. This is actually on the, the Berlin map, which, which comes with the game again. Uh, I've just opened up this tile because it has a river, and I want to be talking uh, a little bit about that. And... Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a, it's kind of a blank slate. I've also put it on easy mode, so I've got tons of money to play around with. I could also cheat in money if I need to for the purpose of demonstration. Uh, but I kind of want a blank slate to work with here. So, uh, first, the first things first, I'm going to go through all of the different types of transportation one by one. Uh, and for each type of transportation, I'm going to talk about its capacity, uh, it, its speed, and its basic use in the game. So, so first of all, let's look at the road types. Okay, there's road and there's transit. So, we have the street. The street is the cheapest type of road-based transportation in the game. It has a low capacity, and it is slow. However, it's cheap, so keep that in mind. Uh, and I, if you if you zone, if you make a big zone like this and you're not holding shift, it will automatically build streets for you. Uh, a lot of players don't like to use streets. A lot of players go straight to roads, um, which are the, you know, a higher level of of street, basically, with a higher capacity, and they're faster. Uh, streets have their uses. Uh, streets are very good for residential areas, because residential areas don't like high traffic. So, anyway, we'll talk more about how you can design a street grid and take advantage of streets, but keep that in mind. So, next level up is roads. Uh, roads are roads are faster than streets and have a higher capacity. Okay, so that's that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now, next up, we have two forms of transportation that are that have that are similar uh, and that serve a similar function. We have one-way roads and avenues. Okay. So, what's the difference between a one-way road and an avenue? Well, obviously, uh, a one-way road uh, is one way, and an avenue is two ways. However, in SimCity 4, one-way roads are actually faster than avenues. Okay? So, why would you upgrade a road to an avenue? It's to increase the capacity. An avenue is the highest capacity road, um, other than a highway. But it's not, it's, it's not as fast as a highway, and it's actually not as fast as a one-way road either. So one thing you can do if you want to build a fast avenue is something like this, okay? So you've got traffic going this way, traffic going that way. Obviously, if you build a one-way a one -way road grid, you have to make sure that you have roads going both ways. So if I build something like this, this is a problem, right? Because that is a dead end. So you got to be you have to be mindful of dead ends, and you have to make sure that this is also a dead end, right? So you have to make sure that your your sims have somewhere to go, and that the network, you know, they, you can't you can't put de dead end streets are, are not going to work, right? So so yeah, but one way one way streets can be very useful um, in terms in in that they're faster, and avenues are useful because they're higher capacity. All right, finally, I'll talk very briefly about highways. I'm just going to use the vanilla highway in, in the, that comes with the game, but a lot of players will prefer to use uh, the, what's called the real highway uh, puzzle pieces. I'm just going to use the vanilla highway because it's very quick to build, right? Um, but uh, but you, the real highway mod is very interesting, and there, there's some good videos out there about the real highway mod and how to use it. Uh, I'm just going to show you briefly. There are two types of highway that come with the game. One is the ground highway, and one is the elevated highway. Uh, there's a few things you can do very easily with highways. If I if I make an intersection like this, it will automatically 
it will automatically convert that into um, an exchange like that. Uh, if I want to, if I want to build, I can, if I if I build a road across it, it will automatically build an overpass. And I can also go through the menu here and find various kinds of on ramps. By pressing tab, I can cycle through them. So there's a there's an on ramp with an avenue. We've got another uh, an overpass with an avenue. This is a what is this? I'm not going to go through them all. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, but yeah, you can see that there are different types of you can see that there are different types of that's a one way a one way street intersection or um, off ramp that these there's there's other. This one is a, oh, this is for, this is for elevated. But anyway, there are, there are all sorts of ones. You can play around with them. Uh, you can play around with them. And especially if you start playing around with the network add-on mods, puzzle pieces, uh, you can find all sorts of different, um, different highway puzzle pieces. So let's talk about transit now. And I'm just going to draw a quick street grid. Uh, let's talk about uh, transit and the various kinds of transit in the game. So the, the cheapest and simplest form of transit is the bus stop. Uh, you can place bus stops. You should probably always place bus stops in your cities. Unless you're building a basically a rural farm town, you should probably place, place bus stops. Uh, the closer you place your bus stops together, the more the more Sims will use the bus. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that Sims will Sims will only walk. I, I believe it's eight or possibly twelve tiles on the grid, right? So Sims will only walk a certain distance. So if your if your bus stops are much farther away than say this if your bus stops are much farther away than say this where you're you know you're kind of staggering it or something you may find that some of your sims start to be uh, start to be out of range of a bus stop but yeah uh, the best place to build bus stops the best place to build any transit stop is always an intersection because it just it maximizes the the number of uh, sims which are in range uh, and which can walk. Sims can't walk across empty grass tiles unless you use pedestrian malls and other other fancy tools that come with the network add-on mod which are really cool and I, I highly advise that you explore those but like I said I'm gonna focus on on the I'm gonna focus on what comes with the vanilla game right now. So next up uh, next up I'm actually gonna talk about rail okay and the reason I'm talking about rail next is that rail is cheap so uh, rail has a, a very high capacity, comparable to almost as high capacity. I think it has as high capacity in the NAM as as a highway. Okay, so it's a very very high capacity form of transit. It's also very fast, so it's basically the same speed as a highway. Okay, so if you want your Sims to travel long distances on a high capacity route, it's very fast. Rail is also very very cheap. So when you're first building transit in your city, you're going to probably want to be doing putting uh, train stations and bus stops, and it's going to be a lot cheaper than building a subway or or uh, you know elevated rail and all that. Uh, on that note, though, let's quickly look at the two basic options for inner city mass transit you've got your elevated rail and your subways. So elevated rail looks like this. I'll build a little length of it there. I'm gonna give you a quick tip for laying down elevated rail. And that is that you should place your stations first. So elevated rail station. Put two stations there and maybe one over here. See when I build the station, it breaks the link. And so if you, especially if you're on a tight budget, if your city is gonna run out of money soon, you you should place the stations first and then run the rail through them. Otherwise, you'll find that you have to redo all of the intersections with streets. Once again, always put the station, or as much as possible, put the station at an intersection. 
Uh, and yeah, elevated rail is uh, the cheapest form of inner city mass transit. It is cheaper than subways. Uh, it is, however, more expensive than, than regular uh, rail. And it doesn't have quite as high a capacity as regular rail, and it's not quite as fast as, ra as regular rail. So that's the general thing to keep in mind there. Uh, let's talk about subways briefly. So uh, before we talk about subways, I just want to show you, this is one of the puzzle pieces that comes with the base game. Mm, I just got to find it. There we go. Subway to, no, subway to elevated transition. Okay. So you can, you can always use a combination of, el of elevated rail or L trains and subway by using this puzzle piece. At which point we open up the the, the mass transit button here and we can we can build subway so this so one solution if you have built a city that has a lot of elevated rail and you you want to use subway is you know use elevated rail the obvious disadvantage of elevated rails it takes up a lot of space right it's taking up a whole side of this street uh, you cannot develop where it is uh, subway on the other hand, if I were to build, so look what happens when I'm trying to zone, say, a commercial area along this transit line here. All right, I can only zone on one side of the street, uh, and it's just it's taking up a whole a whole row of tiles there. Whereas if I build a subway line, let's use this. This is the subway station that comes with the game. If I build a subway line like this. Look at all the space it frees up. Okay. So subway is obviously, in a lot of ways, preferable. However, subway is very expensive. So especially in smaller cities or cities that are having financial problems, you may not have the money to lay down a subway. You can very quickly chew through your bud budget laying down subway lines. So one solution is to build subway. Subway is a great thing to build in parts of your city that are already heavily developed, so that you don't have to demolish huge parts of the city to build an elevated rail line and then when you reach the edge of your city and you want to expand your transit network you might want to build an elevated train uh, you know because it's cheaper uh, I would also consider if you are going to build a, a, a bridge uh, it's not a bad idea to build an elevated rail bridge right because it's just cheaper so it's a good thing to play around with that um, between the subway line and the elevated rail line uh, there is one final form of transportation that comes with the game and that is the monorail okay so that's the the uh, vanilla moderate monorail station the one that comes with the game and monorail is basically a form of very fast uh, train it's extremely expensive to build. It's very, very fast. Extremely expensive to build, and you can, you, once your city's, you know, very large and very rich, you can certainly consider uh, building monorail. Monorail is probably overkill. It's, it's, a, it's the fastest mode of transportation in the game. It's probably overkill for most cities. Okay, if you, if you are building uh, a huge regional. Uh, you know, a huge region with multiple large cities in it, and you want to have like a lightning fast mode of transportation, then monorail might be something interesting. But for the most, I'm not going to talk very much about monorail in this episode because, you know, if you've gotten to the point where, where your city needs or can make use of monorail, you probably know what you're doing. Uh, it's, it's not uh, the most important things I can, I can show you are, you know, how to make use of rail, how to make use of bus stops. Uh, how to make use of uh, you know elevated rail and all that. Uh, let's talk about let's talk about another form of transit. Let's talk about uh, industry and freight. Okay. So if I build an industrial zone, right? Uh, if you remember from the last couple of episodes, I mentioned that uh, industrial zone industrial demands will hit a demand cap uh, unless unless the industrial area is connected to a neighbor connection. So unless it has a road or a rail route going off the map, right? Streets, by the way, cannot make neighbor connections. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember. So in this case, if we were to build this industrial zone and press play and then the zone built up and everything, 
all the freight would take this road and go off the map. Now, you can also you can also build a freight station, which is this puzzle piece. Okay. And you can and you would do the same thing, you would put a rail connection off the map. Also, Industry doesn't necessarily need a freight uh, a freight train station. Any industrial tile that is within three tiles of industry, well, they'll actually offload their freight directly on the rail. So that's really cool. Uh, so just remember, however, that with the network out on mod and in general in SimCity 4, uh, the freight trucks will always take the fastest route. So if you have, let's say that we have this freight train station here, okay? And then we also have a highway right here. Okay, so we have the rail station there and we have the highway there. A lot of these, uh, a lot of these, um, a lot of this industry is probably gonna use the highway. So you may find that your, if you provide faster options, uh, you may find that your freight stations are just underused. Okay, I want to briefly mention another thing to do with freight, and that is ports. Uh, this city does not really have a lot of water to suitable to build a port, but uh, one thing I want to mention, uh, it's not a big deal because the, the, this is the seaport that comes with the game. Uh, the vanilla seaport does not function, okay? Uh, it is it is buggy. Let's see if I can actually build one. Okay, so that's what the vanilla seaport in the game looks like. Uh, I, I managed to build one on this ridiculous river. You would never build a seaport like this. But uh, it's very important to remember that uh, that if I were to build an industrial zone, say here, uh, in, the industry will use the seaport and that in, in the sense that the freight trucks will take this road and go down to the seaport and that's how the freight will leave the city. However, uh, there's a there is a bug in the game. The vanilla seaport is broken. So what seaports do is they take the freight off the map, but they don't raise the demand cap. So if you if you use seaports, it will be actually very bad for your city because it won't raise the demand cap. Now there is a mod for that. Uh, it's a rather complicated mod to install, but I, I will be making a video on recommended mods and I'll tell you about how to fix that problem. Uh, if, if you don't want to get into a kind of elaborate modathon with your game, then just don't use seaports. But regardless of that, I will I will talk about uh, I will talk about how to fix seaports. But the takeaway for this episode, for the time being, is just don't use them. A couple other things. So we've talked about roads. We've talked about types of transits. We have talked about industry and freight rail. Uh, let's talk about bridges. So streets in the vanilla game, streets can't build bridges with the network add-on mod. Streets can. Uh, become bridges, but let's just use. Let's just start with roads. Um, b bridges. So you can build a road bridge. You can select all these different types. Uh, depending on the height of the bridge, uh, if the bridge is too low, uh, it, ferries won't be able to run under it. We're going to talk about ferries in a second. Okay. So I'm trying to find a spot where if I build a bridge, it won't be high enough for ferries. Yeah. So you see, this is not high enough for ferries. If you run into a problem where your, you know, your bridge is not high enough for a ferry, uh, rather than use, rather than use uh, this slider here, this slider here will make crazy looking bridges. Okay, so if I do that, like especially if I increase it that way, it will just it will make really crazy looking bridges. Uh, well, that one's not so bad. Okay, but but uh, one of the things you can do is raise the terrain on either side. Okay, to kind of prepare for the bridge, flatten it out a bit, right? And and I'm, I'll let you play with that off screen. I'm not going to go through an exhaustive bridge making, but you see right away now we can have a very level road with a bridge that uh, that allows for ferries to cross. And I do recommend I recommend building bridges that ferries can go, can go under. Okay. Um, one thing about bridges is so you can also build. Obviously, you can build avenue bridges. Oops. Uh, you can build avenue bridges and highway bridges. Uh, you know, if you are if you're building a very dense city that has a lot of traffic, 
uh, and you don't, in, unless you want to have bridges every block, right? Like, oops. If you want to have bridges at like every 10 tiles or whatever like this, uh, then, then you, you know, building a lot of, building a lot of, uh, road bridges may be a good idea. Um, I would encourage you to, uh, to think about building higher capacity, higher capacity bridges, right? So we can build a highway bridge. Okay. Uh, one thing I didn't mention about highways is that the highways can plug directly into avenues. The ground highway can plug into this. So that's kind of cool. And there's all sorts of ways to do that with the, with the various features of the network add-on mod as well. But even if you're, even if you don't have, you know, if your street grid looks something like this, okay, in your downtown area or whatever, obviously this is a, a big mess. Uh, I'll talk more about grids later, but this is, you know, this is your street design or whatever, and uh, you don't have a highway, it might be worth considering upgrading just the bridge portion. Uh, bridges are going to create traffic bottlenecks, right? So unless you want to have 16 bridges crossing crossing a river, which which you can opt to do as well. One way to do it is to just increase the capacity of the bridge. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, what else to talk about? Ferries. Ferries are great. Okay, ferries here. There are two types of ferry that come with the game. There's the passenger ferry terminal and the car and passenger ferry terminal. These ones are really, really cheap. You can see monthly cost is 10. Uh, I don't recommend building the passenger ferry terminal. I recommend building the car and passenger ferry terminal. Now you're going to have to, when you're building any kind of uh, ferry terminal, you're going to have to level up the train. And then you'll get a, uh, a ferry terminal like that. I recommend building the car and passenger one because otherwise only people using transit can, can use your ferry terminals. You know, by all means, play around with both. They do, they both function. They both function, but you, I find it's a little bit more flexible. Uh, when you're building, uh, ferry terminals are great for two reasons. First of all, they're a lot cheaper than bridges to build. Okay, so you build, you have to build one here, and then you would build one on the other side of the river. They're great for young cities uh, that don't have a lot of traffic yet. They have a fairly high capacity, uh, not quite as high as, say, a highway bridge. The other thing about ferries is that they can take, you know, let's say that you have Sims living here, and the work, and then you have a workplace over here. They can, they can take Sims exactly where you need them, right? So a, a crossing is always going to be linear. Right, like your bridge is not going to start here and go all the way over here. Unfortunately, in SimCity 4, you can't build diagonal bridges as well. So ferries are a very flexible way to send Sims exactly where you where you need them. Uh, so I highly advise using ferries when you first start your city. Now this is obviously a very narrow river, so probably a bridge would make just as much sense. But when you have a big, big, big span, you know, building a huge bridge is not always the most effective way of doing things, and a ferry might be more precise and and cheaper. So, use ferries. Uh, the one last thing I want to talk about is tunnels. So, tunnels are, can be a very useful, uh, can be a very useful way to, to move sims long distances, uh, and, and also to, to have densely built cities. Okay, so this is just kind of a rough tunnel I built very quickly, but one of the advantages of a tunnel is, let's say you have kind of an arterial road and you want to take it, you could build a much farther tunnel than this, right? So what I've done there is I've lowered the terrain and, and kind of flattened it and then, you know, and that's, that will initiate the tunnel. And I'll show you, I'll show you again. I'll just show you what it looks like when you're actually building it. See, it, it glows green like that and then it makes a tunnel. Tunnels are great because I can build a road network on top of that. So let's say I've got a street here and a street there. Again, this isn't very pretty. The idea here is not to make a, a very pretty, beautiful city. Uh, tunnels are great because I can have, you know, a whole street grid up here and buildings. And that, and it also allows me to, you know, this avenue, rather than taking up two tiles here, is allowing me to build on top of it. So it's wasting a lot less space. 
So tunnel, tunnels are very useful, um, and I would I would advise one. You know, you could build, for example, a highway tunnel that skips over the densest downtown part of your city. Uh, you could build a rail tunnel that does the same thing. Uh, play around with tunnels. They, they are a great way to increase the capacity of your road network uh, while saving you a lot of space. Same principle. The same principle really applies uh, when you're looking at the difference between, say, a subway and, and, a, and an elevated rail. So, uh, that pretty much uh, covers off everything. The only last thing I want to talk about is tolls. Okay. A toll booth that comes with the game. Tolls basically have two functions. Uh, they they make you money. So if I put a toll booth here, that means that everybody driving on this highway has to stop and pay a toll. Uh, they they make you money and they encourage Sims to to use other connections. So let's say I have this. Basically, it's like well, if you want to pay, you can take this. You can take the faster route. If you don't want to pay, you can take this route. They affect Sims choices in terms of which route they take. They also provide you with money. Uh, you can use tolls on neighbor connections. That's one way of doing things. Uh, I like to use tolls on bridges as well. Uh, if a lot of you lived in a, you know, a big city or whatever, uh, tolls can go on avenues as well, obviously. Uh, if a lot of you guys live in a big city, like say New York City, that has a huge number of bridges, um, there are all sorts of toll bridges. Um, sometimes there's a toll in only one direction, sometimes there's a toll in the other direction, but tolls are fun to play around with. Not not a necessary feature of the game, but you know you can you can play around with them, especially if you want to fund an expensive transit system. Uh, making people who are driving on your expensive highway bridges uh, pay tolls is not a bad idea. So that's it for going through all the different uh, modes of transportation. Uh, one last thing uh, I would say is the parking garages public parking garages. Um, some some kinds of transit stations, uh, like train stations, um, have their own parking. And that means that cars can come, people can, people who live, like someone who lives here can drive their car to the train station, get on the train, take the train, and then get off and use the bus at the other ends. Uh, other forms, like say this elevated rail station, you'll need to build a parking garage if you want people to be able to drive to it. But to be honest, I find that these are pretty buggy. Uh, so these are best used in suburban areas where people are driving, where you don't have a lot of uh, transit stations. Rather than use a parking garage, I would encourage you to simply build a bus network that's close enough together <laughs> so that people don't need to use cars at all. Uh, but you certainly, if you want to build an American-style suburban city that doesn't have a lot of buses or where the bus stops are like, I don't know, like really far apart. Uh, if you wanted to build a city where the bus stops were like, there's one there and there's one there, uh, you know, then, then you're going to start looking at things like parking lots. And that's going to encourage more people to, to use them. But the thing about the parking lot as well is it takes up a lot of space. It takes up a lot of space. So it can be interesting if you're building an American-style suburban city, uh, but overall I don't use it very much. I don't find that it, it works super well in the game. Right, so now that we've gone through all the different types of um, all the different types of roads and transits, etc., uh, I want to I want to talk about examples of road network design. So there are two basic kinds of road design that work well in SimCity 4. Obviously you can design roads any way you want and the way that your road network looks is going to be largely a matter of personal preference but there are two there are two kinds of road design that, that have different functions and they actually come from the real world. So because SimCity is a four-sided grid it's a square grid and not like a hex grid or a vector based system that has that allows you to do curvy and diagonal roads and stuff that's probably its biggest disadvantage I've talked about that in the past um, but uh, it works very well with grids now one thing to keep in mind especially in the residential parts of your city is that residential and commercial the maximum size the largest some of the largest buildings have are are gonna be like four by four but there are very few buildings that are more than three tiles away. So 
your basic grid. If you want to make a very dense city, your basic grid is going to be a 6x6. Six six. Okay. So you're going to do something like that. Okay, and then you're going to continue. Like that. Okay. So, uh, don't pay attention to the fact that it's a street versus a road right now. I'm just talking about the grid as an idea. Now, what are the advantages of a grid? Well, first of all, the advantage of a grid is that if you have people, uh, you know, if you have people living on this grid and they need to get, let's say that this grid is much bigger. Okay, so if we have a much bigger grid, and I've just drawn this one very roughly. If we have a much bigger grid, the advantage of a grid is that, uh, you know, you, you've got, people can get from anywhere to anywhere in a very, very simple way, right? So it's like, go five blocks this way, go there. So, so grids can be uh, very efficient. They're also good for a mix of different types of transportation. They're, they're very effective if you're going to have uh, bus, pedestrians, um, car. They, they basically minimize the distance, the distance that anyone has to travel to get where they're going. Right. Uh, the other kinds of so the disadvantage of a grid, first of all, the dis disadvantage of a grid, first of all, is that it has a lot of intersections. Right. Intersections have a lot more tra uh, tr um, traffic congestion. So if if you know one of the things you you're going to want to consider doing is is minimizing the number of intersections to speed up travel essentially and there are trade-offs to doing that uh, one one last thing I want to talk about before uh, while we're talking about grids is one thing you can do when you're thinking about intersections is you can think about how your city is designed so let's say that this is our industrial area here okay let's just zone this industrial quickly all right this is our industrial area and we want to build our residential area here okay so let's extend this grid here. You can play around if you want to minimize the number of intersections and speed up traffic. You can you can make rectangular a rectangular grid. This is a square grid, uh, and a square grid uh, is good for downtown areas in particular. I wouldn't use it for in, uh, for industry, but I'm just using it for the purpose of demonstration. Uh, you can make a rectangular grid, and a rectangular grid has the advantage. We know that if I build residential here. If I build residential here, we know that most people are going to be traveling here. So they're going to be going this direction rather than this direction. So if if I build my rectangular grid with the rectangles where the, there's the fewest intersections this way, if I were to do the opposite, if they were traveling this way, they would stop at one, two, three, four, five intersect intersections. When they're traveling on this axis, they stop at one, two, three. Right? So you can design your grids in, in a way that you know, kind of predicts people's travel habits, right? Obviously, I'd want to put bus stops in here too. Uh, so that's an important thing to remember with the grid. Let's talk about the second kind of transportation planning that you can do with a road network in SimCity 4. That works very well on this square, the square uh, grid. And that is what is called in urban planning. And this is a real urban planning and this is a real-world urban planning tool. It's called a super block. Okay, I'm building a very big one right now, just just to demonstrate. But the idea of a super block, it's not a super block in the sense of like Superman super block. It it is a superior block, a block that that goes around the outside of a large area. The idea between the idea of a super block is to limit traffic in residential areas. Uh, so limits traffic danger and stuff like that, and to direct traffic towards higher capacity or faster faster modes of travel. It's a very car-oriented design. It's not a design that you'll see in old European cities. Uh, it's and it has a number of advantages and a number of disadvantages. So the superblock works with a with a hierarchy of networks. So perhaps we would have a few roads coming off of this okay like that maybe one here maybe one 
here and maybe one here, okay? The idea behind a super block is to have the, the absolute minimum number of intersections. So very few intersections on this on this avenue. And you would you would then build streets like this. And this is just a rough super block by the way. Uh, you can you can get much more creative about how you do these. But this is a this is a basic, you know, sort of suburban design. A basic sort of suburban design. You can also do. You could do things like uh, like crescents, right? That go around like that. Uh, you, these are these are basically cul-de-sacs. Uh, anyway, you can play around with with the super block design. But the super block design, its function is to have the bare minimum of of intersections and to limit traffic uh, in residential areas. So when you're zoning this, it would look something like this. It would look something like this. Now, obviously, I, this is not very well filled in and everything like that, but you get the basic idea. The idea is that if you look at all of the residential zones here, the lots are pointing towards the low capacity, slow streets. Uh, and that means that the residential areas are not getting uh, a lot of traffic. Your commercial areas would be around the edge of the super block, right? So they'd be around the edge of the super block and perhaps on this side as well. And, and that's the basic idea is that you have a segregated, a very segregated city, uh, not racially segregated, although <laughs> that's a whole other topic, but uh, a, a city that is segregated in terms of the functions, uh, where, where commercial functions happen on these busy high capacity roads because commercial areas benefit from traffic and, uh, and um, you have your residential areas on these quiet residential streets. And obviously that obviously the way that you build a city of super blocks is, is you build many of these, right? So you you build the whole city in these in these giant. Rather than having a super block is a grid, right? It is a grid pattern. And if you look at a city like I don't know Phoenix, Phoenix Arizona, even though you see all these weird little crescents and cul-de-sacs inside the super blocks, if you zoom out a bit more, you'll see that you know really it is a grid. It's just that the grid is much bigger, okay? And you can integrate highways into this and. Uh, you know, every every couple of avenues, you can have a highway. Your your avenues, you know, we could have a highway, for example, over here that takes you to regional, you know, that sort of connects to the rest of the region. We could have a highway like this. And this is a very American-style suburban city, and it's used to some degree in European cities as well. So you can see how there's an absolute hierarchy. Oh, that's a mess. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, you can see how there's an absolute hierarchy where the small streets are used for residential areas. Uh, these these roads are used to bring people out to to the the big arterial grid, right? And then the employment is focused around uh, those high capacity the high capacity grid around the outside. You could do the same thing with. Uh, you could do the same thing with industrial areas, uh, etc. So, so that's that's the other basic way of, of developing, and it's a little bit more time consuming. But a lot of people like that. A lot of people, uh, you know, maybe you live in a city like that. That's you know, a lot of people these days live in a city that's that's a very American style suburban city, and and uh, you know they want to build a city that looks like where they live. This is a more classic uh, city. Uh, this is a more, uh, you know, and and probably simpler to build. Uh, this one of the disadvantages of the uh, super block is it's very bad for pedestrians. Very very bad. If you've ever lived in a in a suburb of an American city, uh, if you live here, you know, even if there's bus stops along these roads, you know, imagine bus stops like kind of spread out everywhere here, right? We could put bus stops on these roads. If you've ever lived in a in a North American city, you know, walking to one of these bus stops, and there'll be bus stops along here as well, right? Stop at every corner or whatever. You know, 
you, if you live here, you gotta walk all the way over there to the bus stop. And and then you get on the bus, and the buses have these weird sinuous routes, right? Whereas a grid is very, very, very effective. Like, that's one line, that's one line, that's one line. There's, they, they cross with other lines, etc. So, yeah, there's, there's serious problems with the superblock in terms of pedestrians. Now, you can mitigate that if you use the pedestrian tiles that are that are available in in the um, in the network add-on mod. I'm not going to get too much into that, but you can get very creative with this and you can make something like a fused grid. Uh, a fused grid, if we go back to our little grid area here, a fused grid is a grid where they've purposely created cul-de-sacs and taken out uh, parts of the grid to, to discourage uh, vehicle through traffic and and they create a similar hierarchy as you see in a super block except that they prevent cars from driving on on the local streets and what you would do if you cut the block is you might provide like you might put a pedestrian walkway there right so I won't get too much into fused grids they're very interesting um, I might I might do another episode where I where you know an episode of my let's play or something where I make a fused grid uh, and I'll maybe put a link to that in in, uh, in the description of this video if I do so, but those are the two basic ideas. You can build either a super block style hierarchy of roads or you can build a simple grid. And the simple grid, uh, you can obviously, it doesn't have to be streets, it can be roads, it can be, you can increase the capacity as you, as you, uh, you, as you go along. I want to talk about highways briefly now. Uh, I want to talk about uh, highways before we get into mass transit design. Highways are obviously a very fast mode of transportation, right? They're the fastest car-based mode of transportation, and they have a lot of advantages. They can take your sims uh, very, very far. If you're going to go to other regions, or you're going to build a very big city, highways are probably going to be, or may very well be, part of what you do. What are the disadvantages of, of highways, though? Well, first of all, highways tend to create bottlenecks. Because they can carry so much traffic, You very often you'll have bottlenecks on your off-ramps, okay? Even if you have a lot of off-ramps, even if we build off-ramps here and here, and I'm, these are not off-ramps, but even if you build off-ramps uh, the whole length of your highway, every block, if you have a block-based city like this, every one of these has, a, has an off-ramp on the highway, they still tend to create a lot of, of bottlenecks because uh, as cars come off this very high capacity fast road, they come onto this avenue and they slow down, right? And so they can create, you know, massive traffic jams, just like in real cities, traffic jams often occur near highway off ramps. So that's, it's one of the challenges. Highways also, also create a lot of pollution because there's a lot of cars driving on them. So there will be negative effects. High, uh, high wealth residential sims will not want to live near highways. Uh, commercial offices tend to like being near highways though because of the traffic obviously. They also take up a lot of space and that is that is something I, I'm going to... Uh, I'll, I can demonstrate like this is huge, right? It takes up a huge amount of space. How many how many apartment buildings can we fit in there? I remember I remember in my in one of the very first I went to university for urban planning about mm, seven, eight years ago. Uh, I never ended up becoming an urban planner, but it's been a long time passion and interest of mine. Uh, but uh, I remember a, a professor of urban planning on one of the very first classes I went to in my undergraduate. He put up an aerial photograph of uh, a spaghetti style highway junction in Montreal, which is the city I live in. And he, he put it right beside an Italian a small Italian city of about 150,000 people. And this is a very small interchange, right? But it's not a very realistic one either. But uh, what he was trying to show was that they took up the same amount of space. So a huge spaghetti inter interchange, American style spaghetti interchange, you can fit like 100,000 homes often in, in, in the space it takes to build one of those. And the same principle applies in SimCity 4 in the sense that if you have a huge highway network that spans your entire city, if you have like a highway style grid, it's going to take up a lot of space. Okay. It's going to take up a lot of space uh, that you could use. Look how much, look how, what the density we can create in a grid, and, and you know, especially in a grid like this, a rectangular grid. Look at the density we can create. 
uh, very quickly. So if you want to fit a lot of people and a lot of jobs in a small area, highways are going to take up a lot of space. So that's just one thing, good thing to keep in mind. Now, we've covered off the road types and basic road designs. Let's talk about some mass transit designs. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, is a, is is a couple distinctions. So, and this is again, this is again very very similar to real world uh, real world transit uh, and and problems that real world cities face in terms of transit. So, there are a couple ways we can build transit. We can build transit. We can build out. Okay, we can build a linear transit development that goes out. Right. And let's just do this to indicate roughly where the grid would be. Uh, we can build, and but the problem that we run into if we build the farther out, the longer that transit lines get. If we keep building along this line here, if we keep building along that, that line there, and we put another station, right? The longer that these lines get. Every stop along the line adds passengers, and the longer the line is, the more congested it gets along its route, right? So, uh, you know, while while you can build long transit lines that provide uh, transit to a very wide area, especially if you're building maybe some low density stuff, and you've got a, maybe a hierarchy of a hierarchy of streets that's directing directing people towards you know your transit stations building building transit out is is going to allow you to serve a, a very wide area and it's going to be a cheaper way to serve a wide area however it, it it is going to cause congestion in the long run right if we have a transit system that looks you know something like this maybe there's a spur that goes down here Okay, I don't know. Uh, at a certain point, it is go is going to end up with congestion because huge areas of the city are sharing a common piece of infrastructure, right? The other thing you can do is you can build you can build a dense transit network and uh, kind of like what a city like Paris has. Okay, and you can do that with uh, either either subways or elevated trains. Okay. But you can build something like more like this, and this is a suitable thing to build in a in a busy, busy downtown area. And your lines would look something like this. Okay, so your lines would look something like this, and the idea being that you know there's various routes that people can 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 take and and that rather than having these long snaky lines you you're actually you're actually providing the stations are, are a bit closer together you would have normally you would have stations all along these routes right like there and there and there and like you know there'd be this whole street grid and the stations the whole length and stuff like that but the, the idea is you can make this dense web of of stations in the downtown area of your city rather than having this linear type development and if you want to look at real world examples of that you know look at a city like Chicago for example um, which has basically a, a transit an elevated rail type transit system that spreads out over huge long lines that serve suburbs way out in the middle it goes very very far out from the central city uh, versus Paris. In Paris, you have a dense web of stations and lines in the central city that, uh, where you know, if you walk around in central Paris, you're never more than about 200 meters away from from a, a subway station. So those are two 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 ideas to keep in mind uh, in terms of how you build transit. Uh, let's talk about another concept in uh, transit design, and that is you know a hierarchy of transit uh, and how you can encourage a hierarchy of transit so okay so I built a grid here and you can see I have I have two main roads and then some side streets okay so before we get into using heavy mass transit we can simply show we can we can use uh, buses alone right so if I put 
on the large arterial streets, I put buses at every corner, okay? And then out here, I might only just put one bus. So that is that is creating a hierarchy of transit in the sense that we, we are encouraging buses to to run on these main roads that are going to probably have more likely have congestion because they're the roads that that people are going to choose to use to get across the city. So that's very, very simple. You can also you can also use a hierarchy of uh, of transit by, you know, using different levels. So the cheapest different levels of transit. So the cheapest uh, hierarchy would be a bus and rail network. So the idea behind a network like this uh, is that the in this case the bus is basically for local travel. So if I if I work if I live here and I work If I live here and I work here, I'm going to take the bus, right? One, two, three, four stops, right? But if I live here and I work, say, here, I'm probably going to walk or take the bus to this train station, take this train and skip all those stations, and then walk or take the bus one little stop on the other end. And that's going to be faster than taking the bus the entire way. Uh, obviously, it depends how you configure this, but you get the basic idea. The basic idea is that you're using your train basically as an express and your bus as a local service. And you can do the same thing with transit. You can build a bus stop every block and a a uh, subway stop every two blocks. Uh, you know, you can build a bus stop every block and a subway stop every four blocks. Uh, and, you know, do a similar thing. For very large cities, you can actually create an express local type rail system like you would see in a city like uh, like uh, New York City. And, and, and let me show you an example of that. Okay, so along this line, we've got a full hierarchy. We've got these rail stations that operate basically as sort of regional transportation that, that takes you very long distance like 10 or 20 blocks you've got these elevated rail stations every two or so blocks and then you've got bus sta stations on every single block okay so that's one form of a, a kind of local and express or a hierarchical transit uh, transit um, system uh, I'm going to draw a comparison between the hierarchical transit system like this and the super block we looked at in, when I was talking about uh, road transportation. One of the things you can do is you can build a very tight street grid but provide a hierarchical uh, transit system and that will overcome uh, some of the challenges of, of uh, dealing with a tight uh, grid pattern. Another thing that I want to mention uh, and this is very interesting uh, is that when you build networks on the diagonal SimCity 4 doesn't play well with diagonals it, it's not a problem to build networks on the diagonal but you can see how annoying it is to zone like it's really 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 time consuming and annoying so a lot of people don't like to use diagonals in this game uh, it also tends to make this really jagged look and stuff like that. I tend to avoid doing it, or I'll do it in certain ways. But one thing that does work that works very well diagonally. One of the problems with the grid, of course, is that you know people have to move in this snake and snakes and ladders kind of kind of way to get across. If 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 they're living here and they're working here, it's going to be challenged to get a challenge to get there. Like if I have a residential area here and a an industrial area here, for example, right? Uh, but that's one of the things that subways are great for. Because subways uh, do not... Uh, subways do, do not need to... So I can do something like that, right? I mean, obviously, you wouldn't build it this messy, but you can use subways as, as a diagonal. Uh, and it can be really good if you're trying to solve a problem and, and you've got a sort of diagonal challenge to deal with, subways are a really good way to do that. Okay, so now that I've shown you the various types of road and mass transit that, that are in the game, let's, talk, let's try and apply some of that knowledge uh, and figure out how to fix real traffic problems in a real city. So here we're back in our tutorial city. Uh, the, which is a bit of an ugly mess, but uh, you know, just for the purpose of demonstration, basically. 
So, first of all, how do we how do we identify traffic problems? Well, sometimes sometimes you'll get these little notifications here that say traffic jam on side street and all that, but it's not always the most effective way. We can click one of these and it will actually take us directly to the corner where it thinks there's a problem, right? And that's somewhat useful. But there are four tools we can use uh, to to look at traffic and transportation in the city. First one I'm going to talk about is the data view. So uh, the traffic data view will show you two things. Uh, you can view it in congestion mode and you can view it in volume mode. Okay, So congestion shows the level of congestion for all types of transportation. So where you see red, there's congestion. The volume mode will show you the volume of different types of transportation. So we can see right now this city doesn't have any transit except for cars and pedestrians. So we can see where, where there are pedestrians and we can see that where there are cars. Right. Uh, the other thing you can look at is the in the graphs tab here, you can look at traffic volume. And we can see that once again we only have two types here and you can click off different ones, right? So we could take off pedestrians and that can be useful. It can be useful to toggle these ones here. And then we can, this is the time scale. Uh, so that's very useful as well, the traffic volume. Uh, we can also look in the graphs at commute time. So we can see that if we look at the time scale here, we can see that over the last 10 years, as the city has grown, commute time has gone up. And that means that the city gets denser, there's more congestion, and the time it takes for people to get from their home to their work grows over time. This is an average for the entire city tile. So this view is going to give you a sense of how bad traffic is generally in the entire city. Okay? And it is useful to look at. So uh, we can also see commute time by clicking uh, by using the query tool. Uh, we'll see commute time here, commute short. Okay, and then if we go all the way over here, we can see that commute still short actually. Yeah, well, it's a small city. Uh, but regardless, when when you get bigger, more complex cities, you'll see certain uh, certain areas will have commute and the same uh, longer commutes and the same applies for uh, the same applies for in industry in terms of freight trips so we can see that freight trips currently are long and we'll see what we can do to fix that uh, in, in for commercial there's no commute time because people are going to work or going shopping what you'll see is customers so customers is basically reflecting a high traffic area and that's why we like to build commercial in high traffic areas because commercial likes customers there we go so uh, those are the four ways we can identify traffic problems and so we can see in this city the most useful one for, to look at in this city is going to be this congestion view that's going to give you the, the best snapshot of, of where you need to uh, look uh, the one thing I didn't cover is also the root query the root query is kind of a a micro precision way of looking at how people get to work so you click on a residential building and it will tell you um, where they're going to work and how they're getting there uh, you click on a workplace and you'll see how people are getting to work so that's actually people are walking all that way uh, and then you'll you can take a look at an industrial area like this and it will show you that and it will also show you freight freight trips although there are no freight trips in the city because there's no connection to a neighboring city very important to do that and we'll, we'll be getting into that in a second you can also click on an actual road and you can see all the users of that road so you can, if you want to click on an intersection, it can be a good way. If you if you go in the traffic data view and you see congestion, oh, there's congestion here. Okay, where is that congestion coming from? Okay, people are walking, people are driving. That's where the congestion is coming from. Okay, and you can overlay those two as 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 you saw there. So, how do we fix these problems? How do we reduce the congestion? Right. Well. First of all, I want to uh, just remind you, if you're using the ultra setting in the network capacity uh, configuration of the, of the, of the network add-on mods uh, traffic simulator, that's the traffic simulator I showed you at the beginning of this episode. If you're using the ultra setting, I would recommend starting with the lowest capacity, which is streets. I would, I would uh, recommend building the lowest capacity because there's no point in building expensive, uh, and expensive modes of transportation that take up a lot of space and uh, I would start with the lowest capacity and then build it up as needed. Okay. 
and I would also recommend for any city, because of the way that poor sims like to use transit rather than cars, I would recommend uh, that you build bus stops immediately as soon as, you, as soon as you build a city. And bus stops can be built kind of every second block or every block depending on how you want to do things. So let's do that quickly. Okay, so I've kind of built bus stops every second block. Let's, let's turn on the clock for a second. Okay, things are going to develop a bit. And let's take a look. One of, the, one of the best ways to check and see if what you've just done has had an effect is to open the commute time graph. And we should see, normally, we should see a slight decrease in commute time uh, because, of, because we built buses. Although we're still getting congestion, right? So we're not really seeing a reduction in commute time. So just just adding buses hasn't really fixed the, the congestion problem. We see we still have these busy intersections. So the next thing you're going to do, if buses don't solve uh, a traffic problem uh, in a city, the next thing you're going to do is upgrade the road capacity. And roads are also uh, a faster mode of, of transportation. So I would advise that you build your roads where you have buses so that, the, so that all modes of transportation are using the roads. So let's build just one road. And this is what I would recommend. Rather than upgrading your entire network, I would recommend building, uh, I would recommend building uh, one road as to act as a primary artery to get sims to and from road to and from work quicker and then later if you feel like you need a second you can start you can maybe upgrade this one where we have buses as well right but let's just go with that one road and let's see how it changes the the uh, the behavior so we'll open up uh, we will open up commute time again And you see right away, as soon as I built that road, look how fast the commute time goes down. So I've provided buses, I've provided uh, a road, and we've, we've right away shaved, that looks like about 15 minutes off people's commute time. I believe this is in hours. Uh, it's not really important to think about uh, whether it's hours or whatever it is, but that, that should be about an hour, and maybe this has gone down to 45 minutes or something, but this is just a, it's an abstract value, okay? Now let's open up the data view again and let's take a look at traffic congestion. So we can see that we're still getting congestion, but we've actually reduced the congestion on these streets. So people are preferring to take that. They are getting to work faster, even though they're getting into congestion in these, on these uh, intersections. Intersections will always have, have, will usually have some level of congestion. We can also look at the volume. So this is the volume of road traffic, which includes all forms of traffic on the road. So pedestrian car and bus. We can look at pedestrian traffic, car traffic, and bus traffic. So we can see that we've basically got these two bus lines running along, and this one is on a road. So, so that's useful to know. Uh, but it, the most important thing is to realize that we've actually freed up capacity on these two streets because people are preferring to take the faster route, which is the road. Okay. The same principle would apply if you're using avenues, highways, and all of that. So. Uh, the other thing we can look at here is uh, in in the graphs mode we can go and see traffic volume and we can see that just placing those bus stops has has increased the volume of the of bus traffic and it's also disc decreased you can see we've shaved off a chunk of the car we've shaved off some of the pedestrians as well so some people who are walking long distances are now taking the bus and some people who, who were driving longer distances are also taking the bus these values are going to depend on um, whether you're using the European transit settings or the American style transit settings so these will change based on what setting you're using I am using the medium high which is kind of a, a, a I like it best it's it's a mix between a, an American American city or any European city, it, it will resemble East Coast American cities like New York or Philadelphia or East Coast Canadian cities like Montreal and Toronto, uh, maybe some Australian cities as well. It, kind of a mix between um, a European style transit heavy city and an American style uh, kind of car centric city. Okay, so we've, we've encouraged Sims to travel along this faster road. One of the advantages of kind of encouraging sims to use particular roads is that we can also concentrate, we can see we have a lot of commercial demand here, we can also concentrate the type of development that likes to be close to high traffic areas uh, on, on our high capacity traffic, uh, tra traffic network. Just quickly zoning, I'm not trying to make it look pretty or anything.
and we can see right away that we get fairly fairly well developed commercial areas uh, along that road. Let's talk about now some longer distance form of travel and the cheapest long distance form of travel that you're going to want to use for a young city that doesn't have a lot of money is going to be rail. I highly advise using rail early on before you start building subways and even highways and all sorts of really really expensive modes of transportation like especially when you have a budget that looks kind of like that. Okay. So rail is very cheap, it's high capacity, it's fast, it will take some long distances and really reduce their commute time. So let's put a rail station uh, near the kind of center of employment here. Or we could build it along this main road as well. But let's just build it down here because, uh, because we have space to build it. And then let's build a new residential area because we have more residential demand. Build a new residential area back here maybe all the way back here. Maybe we want to build a nice uh, kind of suburban area near this beach here. So you're going to want to place your rail station uh, pretty much as close to uh, where your sims are actually going to be working as possible. You're also going to want to place it near a bus stop. So we could put one right in the middle here or at the edge, either way, depending on how you're, how you're developing. You certainly want it to be near an intersection. So let's put it in the middle right there. And let's, let's make sure that there's a bus station right beside it, always at an intersection, always near a bus station. And that will mean that people will be able to take the bus to get to the rail station. All right, and then we'll take this rail and we'll drag it all the way over here. Okay, and that's going to take these sims directly to uh, where they're going to go to work, or as directly as possible to where they're going to go to work. And you can see I've, I've put a street here. It, it's very unlikely that these that these sims would dr would drive all the way on that low capacity street uh, to get to their workplace here. These zones might not develop very well, or they would develop and then they would get abandoned because the commute time would be too long. Right? So let's let that develop. Okay, and now let's take a look at some of our data views. So, we can see right away in terms of congestion, there's no congestion here at all. You would think there'd be congestion, there's only one road for them to get here. So there's no congestion here. We haven't even increased the congestion on this road, and look at that as well. The congestion has really lowered on that road as well. Okay, uh, and now let's look at the volume. We've got road traffic. We can see that most road traffic is just buses going to the uh, train station or cars going to the train station. We've got some people driving, we've got some people taking the bus, passenger train. We can see that the vast majority of people are using the train to get here. All right now let's take a look at the root query tool and let's click on one of these. We can see that really almost everyone is using the train. And it's a very fast, inexpensive way to get large numbers of people uh, to to work. Now here I've clicked on a bus stop and we can see that there are some buses using that road, right? But not very many. And let's click on the train station so we can see that almost everybody is using that train station. And they're all going to work either by bus or by walking over here. Uh, we could also put one along here. Let's see what happens when we do that. We can sort of use this as an express network as I discussed. So if people are going to work maybe right here, they might take the bus or they might take the, sorry, I guess they might take the bus, they might take the train depending on where they're going to work, right? But that could also speed things up. So let's see here, now we'll look at data mode, road traffic, and passenger train, We've in, it's increased. You can see that every stop we add increases the traffic on the, on the rail. Um, Let's take a look at bus. Okay, we can see that there's now almost no bus traffic here because they're taking the bus towards the train station and then they're transferring to the train and taking it there. So that kind of creates a local bus network with a with a, a more express uh, long distance type uh, train train station. Right. Let's take a look at some of these. You can see people are driving there. People are walking there to bus stops, but people are are getting on the train here and they're traveling this way. We can also reverse the direction of this view, right? See here, people are walking all the way to the train station 
over here. Over here you can see someone who's walking to the to the bus stop, taking the bus to the train, getting on the train, getting off the train and walking to work there. Click on that. If you click on one of the end stations, one of the terminals, we can really see, get a very good uh, depiction of the travel habits, how people are getting to work. Right. So that covers off long distance travel, short distance travel. The same principles apply if you're using something like a monorail or a highway or a subway or an L, an L train. You can use the same principle of building stops that are far apart to serve people over here. One, one thing I would point out is that it's not a good idea to put these train stations every single block because especially in a bigger city, uh, you're going to end up with an overused, uh, saturated train network. So it's good to use one form of transportation for long distance travel and one form of transportation for short distance travel. And that's the hierarchy I was talking about earlier in this in this episode. Uh, let's talk about the one last thing I'm going to cover is uh, freight. So uh, in order for your industrial zone to continue to develop, uh, if you uh, it need freight needs to travel off the map into a neighboring region. Uh, otherwise, you'll hit a demand cap and industry will not develop anymore. So there are two ways to move freight. We can do it with a road connection or we can do it with a, with a rail connection. So to do a rail connection, we would build a freight train station. And we would build rail that goes off the map. Okay, so let's open up our traffic data view. Let's let's look at freight trucks first, and we'll see that right away we're starting to to get freight trucks going off the map this way. And now let's look at freight trains, and we can see that there are, uh, there are freight trains there. Now, if I want Sims to use trains rather than trucks, I could either get rid of this connection here, okay, or I could keep the connection here. But reduce the, the reduce the speed of the mode of transportation. Right, so we have a road connection, but there's only a street going there. So more than likely, they're going to prefer to use the the freight truck rather than sorry the freight train rather than the freight truck. And it might be a good idea to if you are going to use a freight rail station, it might be a good idea to build a fast mode of transportation so that all these people can can go directly to to that uh, rail station uh, you can also build industry along uh, along uh, the rail as long as it's no, no more than three tiles away uh, it will if we build it like this they will load directly onto the rail they don't even need to go to the freight station okay so that's two ways you can get freight out of your city Anyway, uh, that pretty much covers off how to, uh, how to um, solve traffic problems in a city. You can see here that by adding all these different, by adding all of these different modes of transportation, I have reduced, I have expanded the city and expanded it quite far away without actually increasing the commute time. So the commute time, this was the commute time before we built all those improvements and this is, the commute time now is lower and we're moving more people further. Okay, we can also quickly look at traffic volume and we can see that we have a mix of there's this we have freight truck and freight train down here. We have a passenger rail there. We have bus, we have car and we have pedestrian. Keep in mind that uh, pedestrian includes people walking to a bus stop. So you might feel like, oh my God, everyone's just walking to work. Well, not really. People are walking to the bus stop and taking the bus to work. Anyway. That, that, uh, that shows you how to solve traffic problems in the game and gives you a few tips for how to do so cheaply in the early game. As your city gets bigger, you can start to build more complex transport networks and, uh, and you know, highways and all sorts of fancy fun things. And that's part of the, one of the greatest joys of this game is to create those really complex transit, transit networks. Um, my only advice would be start small. Start using streets, only increase the capacity as you need it, and rail and buses are much, much, much cheaper than highways and other forms of mass transit in the short term. Uh, I want to talk about one more thing before we go here, and that is uh, how far will Sims travel? 
okay? Uh, and this is this this gets into regional play in SimCity 4, which I will talk about next episode. But uh, I just want to briefly mention how far will Sims travel. Sims will travel from one tile to another. Okay, and depending on how fast the method method of transit is, uh, they they will go from say this corner here all the way over here. If they've got a monorail station there and another monorail station there, they will live there and go to work there. They will not travel from this tile all the way over to this tile. Okay, so when you design your cities and you put your workplaces and your residences, you have to keep that in mind. I'm going to get way more into detail on that in the next episode, which will talk about regional regional play and demand caps and things like that. But uh, but just keep that in mind. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask me questions in the comments. I may do something like make a video that responds to a bunch of questions where you know I say, oh, you know, people if people feel like I missed certain aspects or I didn't give them enough information or certain concepts aren't clear, I may make a video that kind of responds to those questions. Uh, you know, if also if you feel that I am doing this ass backwards, feel free to say like, no man, like that's not how that works, and you know, start a discussion. I I am happy to entertain a debate in the comment section on on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you want to see if you want to see more SimCity 4 gameplay, check out my Plantation Bay. Uh, series, which is a let's play where I take a city from a small agricultural area and I turn it into a, uh, you know, sprawling metropolis. Uh, and if not, uh, I'll see you next time. Ciao.